today, guys, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the interior and exterior structures of our trout. And we are actually going to compare them with the human body. So, Ms. Kramer, this is your second or third year with trout in the schools, right? This is my second uh, year with trout in the classroom. Okay. Uh, last year was very much an experiment year. <laughs> we had to make several trips to Wolf Creek to get some supplements, but this year we've held strong at about 42 fish. Trout Unlimited has got this really cool program, Trout in the Classroom. How many schools do we have in the state of Kentucky now that are doing this exact same program? There's approximately 25, maybe 30 going on, uh, on right now. Our chapter of uh, TU uh, mentors six of them, mm -hmm. and the remainder are mentored by the Bluegrass chapter in Lexington. This is an amazing program. They really get to learn um, not only just how the systems work as far as the nitrates and how the fish, what the fish needs are, they also get to learn responsibility, they get to um, take ownership of something that is a long-term project. You know, they get to see it from beginning to end. Brandon and Leslie. TU's role in this is you guys help train some of these educators and get the materials together to really have this program, right? The teachers first have a course uh, that they take before the school year begins and then we have them assemble the uh, materials they need. For example, the aquarium, pump, filter, chiller, all the chemicals, all the supplies that they need for the, for the school year. And uh, then uh, the first part of November, uh, we bring in rainbow trout eggs from the Wolf Creek National uh, Fish Hatchery. It really is a very educational program and it's a much different way than learning than opening a book and saying, let's read chapter two and have a test at the end. Absolutely. When you say behavior though, can you give me some more details there? What kind of things are you thinking? So when you like come close to us, we move and how when you tap on the glass for the fish, like the fish just swim away. Mm -hmm. These kids are hands-on. They are measuring the chemicals. They are measuring the, the nitrate levels. Yes. They are doing the feeding. They are cleaning the tank. Mm -hmm. Can I have you two boys help me? We're gonna do a water change, okay? All right, have we started? Okay, there you go, Gavin, you're up. The kids really are taking full advantage of this opportunity to manage this this ecosystem. Yes, absolutely, and, and we talk about that. You know, we talk about what do the fish need, what's next. As they grow, they need more, and we uh, talk about when to change the food. So big food, little food, how big is their mouth? So it's just from little decisions to large decisions. They really get to see how they fit in this system as well, because when they take these fish out and release them, they know what small changes to this water what type of effects they can have on these fish. Absolutely, and we talk about watersheds and how humans do change the watersheds in several several locations by what their actions are. Mm -hmm. um, and so they are, they can really relate it to a, at a personal level because of the, the work they do here with the fish. Now releasing fish in the wild is, is something that not only can be very dangerous, but it can be highly illegal as well. That's true, Chad. We, we want to make sure that people don't just are stocking fish and public waters without a permit. So th this is a great educational program. We think this is a wonderful teaching opportunity. These kids are releasing these trout into places where we already stock trout and they have our approval. Here are some rules, please listen. Nobody should be uh, above waist deep. We are trusting you. Please make sure that you are keeping in um, an area where you can see adults. We do several activities before we release them. The lessons leading up to it are about microinvertebrates. We talk about what's uh, pollution tolerant and what's not pollution tolerant. So they take their little minnow catchers and we catch all of the creatures before we even get the fish out to see if the creek is tolerable or what kind of temperature it has. Oh, that is, that looks to be a, either a salamander or a, that's a salamander, guys. That's a salamander. 
We also talk about what does a trout need. So they need hiding places, they need food, they need limited light, they need water temperature that has to be a certain thing. And so we check all of those things um, and then we get the trout out. Basically we're going to put a little bit of water and a fish in each one and just line them up. The kids will walk through here, grab a cup and we'll go back around. Single file, you're gonna go past the truck over here. Keep your hand over your cup. They won't get out. Right there, Mario. Put your hand over here. Okay, we're gonna release these together. So this is how it works. You're gonna very carefully walk out here. It is not even, right? It's the bottom of a creek bed, so you need to feel with your toe. Okay, very carefully. We're gonna count to three before we release. So listen for your number. being outside, looking at patterns, connecting to life. Everything is there for a reason. I tell them all the time, everything is science. And they don't believe me, and then we could connect it either back to the fish, back to the water. These are lessons that they will remember forever.